Hey everybody, what's up? And welcome back to another episode of Hops Geek News. We are a podcast that talks about comic books, movies, TV shows, and a beer of the week. However, we also are your residential place for first-time watchers of Supernatural, in which I am. And so this episode is dedicated to Freaky Friday, aka Supernatural Fridays, where we talk about my journey through Supernatural. Today's episode is going to be season four, episodes one through ten. I am watching for the first time ever. Lauren has been on me about it for years. So if you don't know where to find us, Hops Geek News on all of your podcasting platforms, all of your social media sites, patreon.com slash Hops Geek News, and then hopsgeeknews.threadless.com if you want to support the show. And my beer for this episode. So I'm going to preface this by... We're watching season four. Ruby's back. Spoiler alert. And yes, I was back. That's Jared Padalecki's wife. And so we were sitting there, my wife and I, my wife. Hey, did they know each other before the show? Were they married before the show? And so I looked it up. And lo and behold, this season is where they met. And then they got married in 2010. Well, that's not what gets me. They got married in Sun Valley, Idaho. I am near Boise, Idaho, two hours from Sun Valley. So my beer of the week is a local IPA from Warfield Distillery and Brewery. Come for the winter, stay for the beer, real genuine beer of Idaho out of Ketchum, Idaho, which is in the Sun Valley area, home of their wedding. Is that weird to say? I don't know. Whatever. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. No, it's not it's not weird to say at all, especially for this show. It is. So I I picked one You married Ruby? Yes. I specifically themed one for this. It is real genuine beer of Idaho. It says they say there's something magical about Ketchum. When you're here, it's almost palpable. You can't explain it, but you sure as hell can feel it. Warfield local IPA empowers us to get the freshest IPA possible. Into the hands of Ketchum, catch, sorry, into the hands of neighbors, geez, and friends we know and love. Join us as we tip our caps and raise our glasses to the community we call home. Cheers, friend. Here's to real genuine beer brewed with the best malts and hops in Ketchum, Idaho. It's 5.8% alcohol by volume. Great beer. Just a great beer. Great place. I've gone up there. Sun Valley is a place where there's a lot of skiing to do in the wintertime. Summertime is even better because you can hike a lot of 12,000 footers and Sawtooth Brewery is there and Warfield Brewery is there. A lot of great things to do. So Lauren, what are you drinking? I'm drinking the beer you told me to drink. It's from Sawtooth Brewery in Haley, Idaho. It is their 11 years, 11 years, 11th anniversary cold IPA. And I have it in my Idaho glass that you sent me probably two years ago now. Um, and I was actually just Googling while you were talking talking Supernatural Season 11 to try to connect it to something. And actually, there's an episode that I think the best episode, um, and I don't even think this is just my opinion, is episode four of Season 11, and it's called Baby. And that's all I will say. Oh, look at that. Yeah. It's a phenomenal episode. So Sawtooth Brewery and Warfield are both up in the Sun Valley region. There's a lot of actors and actresses that actually have homes up there, like Bruce Willis and Ryan Gosling. You'd be close to Vancouver, right? No. Kind of. I mean, closer than I am. No, 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 no. You're not closer than me? I'm I'm saying, okay. (laughs) Okay, so, no. We are about 10 hours from Vancouver. Ketchum is to the northeast of where I'm at, so they're probably like... a a little further away but it is about a two-hour drive for me beautiful country up there beautiful absolutely phenomenal if you can make your way up there do it and that's all a long-winded way to say it let's kick off season four episode one of supernatural with lazarus rising jiminy crickets Batman. vancouver's 46 hours for me that's it it's 10 hours for me, I think. Something like that. You do the math while I talk so that about means it. it's 36 hours to you. Okay, yeah. Go to Lazarus Rising. Jimmy yeah. Cricket. You what? only got a few months to get here before I leave. And Dean awakens in a pine box. <gasps> Last we saw Dean Winchester. He was torn apart by the hellhounds. 
He was dead. Puppy chow. He went to hell where he was strung up on chains, and now he is free from hell, and he has a joyful reunion with Sam and Bobby. Bobby! Sam, Dean, and Bobby wonder what pulled Dean from hell and what it will want in return. So they go to a psychic named Pamela, and she reveals its name, Castiel. (gasps) Gasp, finally. And that's also when her eyes kind of burn out of her head. Oof. He told her to look away. He told her not to look. He did. He, he did warned her. her. Uh, first of all, your Castiel Funko Pop looks like it has a mullet and not wings behind it. Well, here, let me put them a little closer. Does that look better? <laughs> it does yes. kind of look like a mullet. <laughs> well, now you just ruined him for me. <laughs> this this episode had it all. We had Wedge and Tillies. We had Misha, who was told he'd be a demon. However, he was only supposed to be in a few episodes. When yes. Dean tracks Sam's cell phone, he finds he's in Pontiac, Illinois. This is also the home of Jimmy Novak. Which and... does make sense. Yes. Real glass. Jensen. Got <laughs> so, so you don't know Jimmy Novak. I just said yes, just because. I know. Can... I try to be vague in these, so it was only people who have seen the show would get it. And Jimmy you wouldn't. Novak is? I was just, I was nodding and agreeing. You, you don't know Jimmy like... Novak. Look, I know Jimmy. It was me and Jimmy. We were blazing up every weekend with Sloan Ketter. Anyways, um, yeah, no, this episode was starts with Dean coming. Like, I thought it was more of, I thought we were going to see Dean in hell. And I thought the, uh. the buried alive segment, I was like, oh God, no, he's in hell. And now they're burying him alive to, to portray. And luckily that wasn't it. He broke out. And then I was like, no, this is definitely Dean in hell because he goes to the gas station and the, the radio's going crazy. The TV's going crazy. There's nobody there. I was like, oh man. But it turns out he wasn't in hell. He finds Bobby. and Bobby He was, was in hell. Well, I, no, no, what I'm saying is he wasn't specific in hell at this second. He had broken. Oh, he's, back he's no Earth. longer in hell. Okay. Yes. I thought this was going to be showing Dean in actual hell. Oh, like it was fucking with him. Yeah. I thought they were playing around. Um, and then when Bobby was okay. like, it's, he was like, it's actually me, Bobby. I was like, oh, so we are back to life somehow? I was like, what are we doing here? What? I was very confused. But Bobby still kept doing Bobby tests. Was, and here's, oh, it was funny. Bobby was so still apparently water and everything. Water apparently doesn't show up on camera that well. So when they do the holy water in the face, there's lube mixed in with the water. Look, it just primed Jensen to get ready for uh, the boys. Gasm. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Uh, this episode, though, was cool because then after Bobby was like, oh, it is you, Dean, which is. I guess it's not that weird because Bobby's going to be in the one spot. Sam hasn't been able to been found by Bobby for months and they finally find Sam and he's with some some girl. And I like how everybody's first reaction is to beat the shit out of Dean. Very <laughs> viable reaction. Very, very, very good reaction. Because he's supposed to be in hell. Mm-hmm. You fight demons. This. But how funny out, is Ruby? Yeah. Ruby's back. Yeah, Ruby is back. But I feel like that scene is so underrated because you don't fully get the extent of that scene until you go back and watch it. Because, you know, she makes a joke. Oh, are you guys together? Like, okay, fine. But then when she leaves and Sam uses a fake name oh, and she yes. says, no, Second. that's not that my name. Ruby? Yeah, she's fucking with him. Oh, I didn't. Okay, all right. I Isn't thought that it was funny? It I thought that was Ruby who left, but then I was like, no, that doesn't look like her in different episodes. That was Ruby. Yeah. Oh, wow. I what? Well, okay. she just doesn't have like the leather jacket. They make her look a little bit more innocent looking. But when she says, "I don't remember the fake name she used or the one he used." And uh, but the fact that he used a fake name and then she made it seem like he forgot her name. She was 100 percent fucking with him. I did not know that was Ruby. How did I miss that? I don't know. But I think that scene is hilarious. That doesn't look like the actress at all. And like she knew who Dean was, too. And she pretended like she didn't. So like kudos to that scene. I personally think that is the most underrated scene, not episode scene in all of Supernatural. That's crazy. My mind is blown right now. So. For take that for what it was. Huh. Wow. Huh. I have nothing else to add to this conversation. My entire thought process of this episode was 
taken astray, I guess. But <laughs> well, you learned say, later they were sleeping together. Well, th- th- we'll get there. But um, yeah, but that's why she just had her panties on. Castiel is introduced. And and Matt will never be the same. No. I. All right. First of all, my boy Castiel needs some chapstick. He looks. <laughs> he notoriously is known for needing chapstick. It's really bothering me <laughs> that my boy is showing up and he looks like he just got done throwing up after a night of binge drinking. Like my guy. God Misha damn. Collins needs chapstick. Yeah. Like what is going on? <laughs> but that's he's funny there. To notice that. And he's an angel. We get angels and Dean's like, God, what? And this takes us to season two or episode two of season four. Are you there, God? It's me, Dean Winchester. He's not going through puberty. No, no. The spirits of Meg and Agent Hendrickson appear and accuse Sam and Dean of failing them. The brothers must save Bobby, who is too crippled with guilt to fight off the ghost of young children he couldn't save. You also that look like the shining twin. Yes. You also forgot my boy from that the Doctor Ronald. Who episode. Yes, Ronald shows up. And this is this this episode was okay. I was like, oh, Meg Masters is back. She looks a lot better than she did when we saw her last. That's because and... she didn't have that whore haircut. Okay. Or that, okay, whore okay, clothes. okay. Let's talk about this. Uh <laughs> the demon took my body and dressed me like a whore. I thought she looked cute. Um, what about that outfit screamed horror? I don't know. The pixie Can cut? I have no somebody clue. Somebody explain it to me because. Well, I uh, think it's it's not actually them. I don't think Henriksen would have come back with a vengeance. I don't, you know. Oh, yeah. Henri- I mean, it was great seeing Hen- Henriksen again and Ronald. But yeah, Meg, um, Meg, Demon Meg. What about that outfit? But it was kind of dark that her sister killed herself. Yeah, but I think it was also these ghosts were marked, and I don't think they were necessarily themselves. This might be our best supernatural review yet because I'm definitely drunk, <laughs> and so you're probably I'm completely get a lot of cool sober. Stuff. Um, how? Anyways, these are the jokes, kid. Yeah, no, me- <laughs> I'm stuck on the whore. Yeah, whore. <laughs> and it just doesn't make sense. But this also, when Bobby's doing his spell and he's inside the salt. Well, okay, never mind. I answered my own question. Meg breaks through the salt. The salt doesn't stop them. With the she wind. Was, yeah, yeah. So that that all makes sense. Okay. What did we get in this episode that is a fun fact? Um, there weren't too many fun facts, the shining twins. And then the title, are you there? God, it's me, Margaret. I think it was a Judy Bloom book about oh. girls going through peer- their, uh, uh, puberty and getting their periods. But I think it was because Dean was like reflecting on like, is there really a God? And like, he was dealing with his own, uh, adolescence, I guess. I mean, he was technically a virgin here. If you believe in monster That's... movie that he was re hymenated. I can't wait to get that. So, it so all comes together. Was this the episode? So we've already, did we already see Sam use his force powers to pull demons out? I, oh, I don't know. If wasn't we saw... this the, was this the episode where Castiel was basically like, you need to stop Sam from doing that. That's in the next one. That's in the beginning. Okay. Well, let's go in the beginning. Castiel sends Dean back in time to 1973. We're going back in time. Where he, this episode was kind of fucked up, but he encounters younger versions of his parents and for the first time meets his grandfather, Samuel Campbell. Samuel Campbell, who is a dick, but also holds a secret that sheds light on the Winchester family's connection to the Hunter community. Okay. I'm going to pause right here. Samuel Campbell. So you saw him, right? Does he look anything like Tom Welling? No. Oh, because Tom no. Welling is playing him in the Winchesters around the same time. The same time, like this isn't like two years. I believe this was seventy three. Yeah, nineteen seventy three. And I want to say the Winchesters is seventy one. No. Way. So I mean, I don't know what happened that made all oh his hair fall out in two years. Is this? But Tom no. Welling is a beautiful no. specimen of a man. Tom Willis. Nothing against the actor that plays Samuel. Campbell two years before. No. Oh my God. Right. <laughs> so. Demons age you. But, well, not even demons. They're not even fighting demons at this point because they don't believe that they can kill demons. 
No, they know they can kill demons because they have a reason. Oh, yeah, 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 back in the 70s. Oh, back in the 70s because yeah. they're like, you killed a demon? Right, but Dean knows. Can... Okay, well, you meet the family. And this is also kind of creepy because Dean's like, wow, mom was a babe. Um, I'm going to hell again. <laughs> and then at the end of the episode, uh, Mary Winchester kisses her dad's corpse, who's played yeah, by that was gross. Azazel was taking over her bod- his body, but they still kiss it out. And it's like, uh, I mean, if it had been Tom Welling, I mean, maybe, but it wasn't. So she, she was an arrow. She was like the Valentine killer person that was like obsessed with Oliver. Okay, hold on. Is Meg Donnelly supposed to be Mary? And yeah, Manchester. interesting. That's not okay. too bad. I love the guy they cast for John Winchester and the Winchesters, and he's actually a supernatural fan. Interesting. And I think you can okay. see that in Meg Donnelly of Zombies for all my Disney fans out there. Ian but. said he can't watch the Winchesters because all he does is see the zombie girl because his daughter's obsessed do with it. the zombie movies. I to do it like the zombies do. Brush your hair, do your makeup. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, um, this move this this episode was a direct back to the future parallel to a T, just about Winchester. Then, when Dean asks young John if he knows where to get cell phone reception with his flip phone, John answers the USS Enterprise. Well, guess what? The designers of the flip phone purposely made the first cell phones to mirror the communicators from the classic TV series Star Trek in 1966. I Googled this to verify it, and I was very surprised. I did not know this was real. I didn't either, and Yellow Eyes is back, Azazel, and poor um, Grandma Winchester gets dusted. Deanna. Campbell, Deanna. Yeah, she's, she gets dusted. Her neck broke. That was pretty brutal. And then Mary, Mary, why? You couldn't have moved on? You made a deal with this demon and kissed your dad. All, all I can think of in that scene was from Euro Trip. You made out Ew, with your sister, worst dude. twins ever. Oh, and that's the guy from Ghost Facers. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes, I knew I recognized <laughs> him. You made out with your sister, dude. That's the all worst I was thinking. Twins I am. You made out with your dad. That's that's gross. That's a that's next level gross, man. I hate Mary. And I didn't really know what Castiel was sending Dean back for in the first place. He's like, you have to stop him. So does that mean if he stops Azazel, then the apocalypse would stop? I think because he, Cass then says you were never meant to be able to stop him. I think what Cass wanted was for Dean to see what Azazel had done to Sam mm. because they don't know why Sam's His getting stronger at this point. Right. Which Sam knows because Azazel straight up told him, he but does. Sam never told Dean that. So Dean goes back and learns this. And then later when they're talking, Sam says what he did all that to go bleed into my mouth. And he's Sam, like, I never said like, oh, that. yeah. But what the angels don't understand is why Sam is getting stronger. For some reason, they can't see that. I don't think you know that yet. I don't. I okay. was about to ask. Is that something that gets? Yeah, no, it definitely gets explained. Okay. All right. Right on. Well, season in, four. In, in fun ways in the future, but not it's tragic in this season. Oh, no. Episode four is Metamorphosis. A hunter named Travis points Sam and Deed towards a meat-eating creature called a Rugaru. Rugaru. Isn't that a dessert? No, I don't know. Complicating matters is the fact that Travis's target is a normal suburban dad in the earlier process of changing, and he hasn't killed anybody yet. This is the first time we hear Dean called Cassiel Cass. We also Aww, learn just long us. pig, which is another the word of the word day for skin or for eating human humans. meat. But this is kind of one of those self-fulfilling prophecies where, uh, yeah. Is killing much... the monster making him a monster or well, it, are you it, killing baby Hitler? Exactly. So like the, the dude essentially he's born as this Rougarou where eventually he wants to become so hungry, so hungry he can eat raw meat. And the second they feed on human meat, he turns ugly Blah, blah, blah. This dad is like, I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. And this old hunter, Travis, kind of points the to- the, the brothers in this direction of him and is like, we got to stop him. We got to burn him alive, all that stuff. But then Sam's like, no, dude. Hey, 
he maybe he can change. And Dean at first is not buying into it. Then, you know, after disagreements and not trusting each other, Dean's like, okay, fine. They go and talk to him. He kind of gets away. And that's when we see that uh, old dude shows up back at home and Travis took his wife hostage. And so he attacks Travis, breaks free after getting captured and eats Travis. Lo and behold, his wife is pregnant. Yeah. And, and they even said, he goes, he tried to kill my wife. Why did they do that? And he realized, and he goes, I don't know. Well, Travis still tells trying a story to about killing wife. this guy's dad, whose wife was pregnant with a son, this guy. And it's the cycle repeats. So it, it really seems like this dude was trying to fight off eating human flesh. Mm-hmm. But Travis forced his hand. He does it. And then Sam ends up burning him alive. Interesting. Interesting. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Like I said, it is what it is now. Episode five monster movie. I loved this episode. It was ridiculous. This is one I tried to get you to watch. I'm always like, even if you're not going to watch the show, just watch this one. All right. It's Oktoberfest. And the Winchesters face off against a shapeshifter who likes to impersonate classic movie monsters such as Dracula, the Wolfman, the Mummy. We even get Frankenstein nods. And so in the Mummy scene, the security guard asks if Helen might have any record of the delivery of the Mummy. Helen is the name of the female lead in the original Mummy film, 1932, starring Boris Karloff. He is also the Grinch narrator. I love that fun fact. I know we talked about it at Halloween time with theme park blurred, but I just thought that I don't was, remember that's a single such thing, a fun though. fun fact. And the security guard is actually Jensen's stunt double. The monster refers to Dean and Jamie as Harker and Mina, respectively. There is also a character named Lucy, because we always have a character named Lucy in this show. All three are references to Bram Stoker's Dracula. Fitting with the theme, Dracula. Sam would be Van Helsing, the bookie professor who hunts Dracula, or you can also call him the uh, beefcake known as Hugh Jackman. If you don't catch that reference, Hugh Jackman played Van Helsing in the movie Van Helsing. Who knew? And when the camera reveals the banner advertising Oktoberfest, it lists the Happy Schnapps combo as entertainment. The Happy Schnapps combo is a polka rock band hailing from Manitowoc, Wisconsin whose beer-fueled musical mayhem has blown the foam off many Oktoberfest. Yes. I like this episode. It was kind of clear that the bartender lady, like my wife, my wife, I have to say that every time, but was the the shapeshifter the whole time. However, the guy who played the shapeshifter, he's been in a lot of stuff, a lot of TV shows. I recognized him right away. And... I like this episode. It was it was black and white. We got classic monster vibes. Dean is even got a Transylvania thing. Yes, and Dean's a born again virgin. He went to hell and he came back, and there's no scars. There's nothing on his body, so he was like obviously. But his tattoo is still intact. His tattoo is intact, and he has the. Okay, that always kind of bothered me. Look, he has protection. Okay, he never leaves. I guess they're like, oh, he's gonna need this, so we'll just leave it. Cassiel's Todd like Stashwick perfect. is Dracula. Yeah, he's in a lot of stuff. He's in a lot of he's like, in TV Star shows. Trek Picard. Uh, I don't know any of these other things. He's Slot, in like Law and Order American and just Horror Story, random Kim TV Possible. shows. If you see him, you will know him. Trust. Twelve Monkeys TV series. Anyway, awesome. Yes, Dean is all about getting old girl. He's like, hey, what time do you go off? She's like, yo, you're a fed. You're not like the feds. And he, he's finally hooking up with old girl in the bar. And that's when the uh, the shapeshifter takes him hostage. He gets put up in the Frankenstein vibe garb. And uh, yeah, this is I, I love this episode. It's black and white again. And it's playing on old horror movies. I love this shit. I love old horror movies. Sign he's me like, up. is there garlic on the pizza? That's right. When the pizza guy goes, he's like, <laughs> I have a coupon. <laughs> that was good. I Oh, man. I, I like this episode. So what I like about the season so far is that we get 
a mix of serious episodes and then we have like that palate cleanser such as this move this episode where it's okay not so serious before we go into episode six which is yellow fever dean uh, this this episode's not very serious though i was gonna say it says serious parts it's it, dean gets his ghost sickness and he becomes their biggest clue this is also like the funniest scene ever the, the scene where dean screams <laughs> that was scary oh. Ah. Oh my gosh. Anyways, Jared Padalecki was the reason for the clip at the end of the episode where Jensen lip syncs and air guitars. I have the tiger. He decided to miss his cue of tapping on the car for Ackles to begin his act to see what Jensen would do. Cameras were often left rolling for their gag reels. So they just continued to film. Uh, uh, basically what happens is Dean gets ghost sickness. He becomes paranoid. He becomes very scared. And it's targeting basically douchebags. And it, it's which is kind of mean. He's like, it's like he's like, like you're kind of like, a bully. Kind of a, yeah, he was like, You're kind a of a dick. dick. Yeah, a dick. And Dean was like, and you're not? He goes, Apparently I'm not. <laughs> but the oh. scene when he goes off on the rant, he's like, Who who hunts ghosts? Crazy people. And he's like, You don't want to sit in the car with me. I listen to the same 10, you know, tapes over and over. He's like, You, you have one burrito and you're gassy. So anybody who's watched Supernatural Gag Reels, Jared Winchester is very gassy. So there's multiple outtakes of like literally Jensen in the car being like, I can't breathe. It smells so bad. So I I don't think that that line was a throwaway line. I think it was directed at probably, Jared Padalecki. Probably so. so. Yeah. I, yeah, this was a very small town. And you get this scene where they open up the locker and Dean screams where we've seen that that gif so many times. And I finally it's finally awesome seeing the gifts match. I got to imagine some of these you thought were fake. No or outtakes. No, I, I, I never did. I just was like, okay. oh, where did that come from? Where did that come from? And to see him come to life, I'm like, oh, uh, I got it now. Even it. rewatching because sometimes I forget. So then I'll be like, oh, that's the one where yeah, he smiles like that. I got it now. And but yeah, that one, Ian actually has the shirt with him screaming. Oh, man, and it says great. that was scary. And he I wore that it. one to the brewery. I love it. I love it. And then I, oh man, I do. I do love it. Episode seven, we get the, it's a great pumpkin, Sam Winchester, Ugh, Charlie Brown, investigating <gasps> two mysterious deaths very close to Halloween in a small town. Sam and Dean discovery, which is sacrificing people to summon an ancient, powerful, and extremely dangerous demon, Sam Hain Sawin. Yep. <gasps> we did a very detailed episode on this we during Halloween. Did. And I mentioned we... this. We did. We did. And Uriel is not mentioned in any Western except a biblical text. He appears in the Apo- Oh, I can't pronounce this word. I don't know what that says. Apocryphal books. He's not accepted books. By- that are not Western accepted Christian by church. Christian churches. I thought that was interesting because I knew that Uriel, because L means of God. Kaylee actually yeah. taught me that. So I knew Uriel was not made up for the show, but I didn't realize like he wasn't in like the typical like Uriel, Bible. Man, Uriel gives like very snitch vibes. Like he's a traitor. Oh, and he calls them like mud monkeys. Oh, it's so cute when monkeys wear clothes. Yeah, he's not a Uriel's he's not a traitor, a nice dude. dude. He's a, he's a wicked traitor. I fucking know it. And so in regards to the peanuts reference, well, the first time I watched this, I didn't understand why it was. It's the great pumpkin, Sam Winchester. So here's my theory. Mm. So Sam wanted to believe in angels, much like Linus wanted to believe in the great pumpkin. And at the end, spoilers for the great, it's the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Linus was disappointed. The great pumpkin never showed up. And this is the first time Sam meets the angels. And he's very disappointed because they are dicks. Oh, that's right. He's like, hey, I'm a big fan, blah, blah, blah. He kind of goes into his like fanboy stage and they're just assholes. And then Cass almost didn't even like shake his hand. No, he's yeah, like, he the, stuck the it out. The boy with the like, demon blood. Hey, hey. Right. Or whatever he said. Does he say that in that one? The boy with uh, the demon blood? Something like that along those lines. Yeah. He's not very nice to him. No. Cass is just very, I don't know. Don't speak just ill of Cass. I'm going to speak what I speak until I get to the point where I don't speak that anymore. All right. You don't speak ill of our. I don't. This episode. Angel Castiel. So episode eight, we have wishful thinking. I like this episode a lot. And Sam and Dean investigate a small town's wishing well. Thursdays were teddy bear doctors. Okay. All right. 
All right. All right. First and foremost, okay. This episode. Uh, <laughs> this wishing well grants wishes. This little girl basically wants a friend because her mom was like, I want to go Ted. to wherever. It's the premise of Ted. It is. She wishes her teddy bear to come alive. Oh, my God. When I tell you the least suspecting scene in any Supernatural episode was the teddy bear sucks just... He was eating a shotgun for lunch. He blew his fucking stomach. <laughs> this So it's a bipolar teddy bear. Life-size. Why am he's, I here? For he's, tea parties! He's... <laughs> <laughs> he's sitting he's sitting in the room and he's got a shotgun in his mouth and i'm like i didn't know that's what it was at first i was like oh he's just having a mental breakdown and then he pulls the trigger and you see the stuffing fly out i was like oh my god <laughs> oh my god supernatural crosses lines you didn't know needed to be crossed holy shit they had a stuffed it and then at the end of the episode the stuffed animal shrunk back to normal size with a hole in the back of its head taped up. I was like, bro, what did I just watch? Magic. You watched Meanwhile, magic. this uh, old dude there, Sam Mammy's brother. He wasn't um, that old. He actually looked pretty young. <laughs> I'm yes, but Sam Raimi's brother um, is the one uh, that's dating Hope. Yes, and he tricks her. Um, also, we're not going to kneel before Todd. Uh, was that kneel before Zod. Okay, no. That little kid killed his family. Killed his mother. Yeah. When you told me that, I was like, what? I, I thought in the episode. Yeah, the kid who plays the little asshole who chokes out Dean apparently is, is facing life in prison because he killed his mom. So, uh. Yay. I don't know the details of it. I don't know. I don't care about to know it. the details of it, but I was very shook when you said yeah. that. And then Jared ironically had food poisoning on this day. So many scenes were shot separately. And it's ironic because Dean was throwing up in this episode. That's right. From the, uh, the bad food that he ordered. He wished improve. for a sandwich. He did. And Hope was also in the episode of Skin. She was the one tied up by her husband. I enjoyed this episode. Like I said, it was uh didn't expect to see a teddy bear kill himself, but here we are. No one ever does. Here we are. I was like, wow. But yeah, um, the guy that was dating Hope, that's Sam Raimi's brother. And I feel like that had to have been why they did try to do a nod to Spider-Man, because this came out around the time that the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies were popular. Oh, that's right. Spider-Man 3 was coming out about this time. Yeah. Or, oh geez. Um, or I think Amazing Spider. We're on to the Amazing Spider Man. Two thousand nine. I guess what two thousand one was the first Spider Man. Two thousand two was the second. Yeah, I guess we probably were on to Andrew Garfield. We were on to Andrew Garfield. Crazy. Was Andrew Crazy. Garfield twenty twelve? I don't know. Anyways, season four, episode nine. I know what you did last summer. Sam, Dean, and Ruby discover the existence of a female prophet named Anna Milton who can hear the voices of angels, and thus figures into the plans of a demon named Alistair who wants to use her as a tool against the angels. We then learn she's a fallen angel. Meanwhile, we also learn how Sam likes it. Naughty. I mean, that's how Ruby seduced him. Do not, yeah. do you not want it because it's wrong. It's bad. And next thing you know, they're married with three kids. So that's how it started. Anna's hospital ward is ward 42. In the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the number 42 is the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. Yeah. Uh, interesting episode. We see Not that Sam anything. got saved by Ruby, and he's been smush, smushing that booty for a bit now. Uh, yeah, we, we all knew that, Sam. The sexual tension wasn't hidden whatsoever. <laughs> we On all screen saw or off. <laughs> yeah. On or off screen, we, like, that's what led me to look up. Hey, were they married or knew each other beforehand? No, they just were. No, they met on set. Yeah, some shit was. It was be... um. So Sam fell for a demon named Ruby, while Jared fell for an angel named Genevieve. That's what I think he said. Oh, that's her real name, in real life. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I was like, what? What are you talking about? Okay, that's gross. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the moral of the story is that uh, women are the devil. All right. Oh no, Lucifer is the devil. Uh, women are satanic. All right. Again, that would be Lucifer. Women are evil. They are demons. Some of them, yes. There we go. And <laughs> that goes into episode 10, where I leave us off. I watched episode 10. Haven't seen past that. Heaven and hell. I'll kill her gentle. The angels want Anna dead. So Sam and Dean go on the run with the frightened girl. Determined to discover the secret that has set the furies of heaven upon her. So they get Godzilla and Mothma in the room and Anna gets her grace back. So in, I say so a lot Ugh. in pagan and early Christian cultures, Oak was highly sacred associated with strength, power, and divinity. It was used to crown Kings as a symbol of their connection and closeness to the divine. So having Anna's grace results in a miracle Oak just made sense. And Jensen got so emotional in the ending scene. He had to walk away when cut was yelled because he couldn't stop crying. He knew he'd have to do a second take. What we see is mainly from the first take. However, that's interesting. Why did he get so emotional? Well, once he started like telling Sam and being honest about hell and what he did in hell oh, and that's how right. That's right. he Those survived were... for so long. Yeah. I mean, like, okay, that was, so that I was guess once episode. you commit to a scene and open up the gates, I guess it's hard to close the gates. Yeah, he, he went on about how he was basically tortured for 30 years straight. And finally, right. after 30 years, it was four months in our time, but 30 for to 40 years, 40 years. And yeah. after 30 years, he was like, all right, I've had enough. I'm going to go do the torturing now. And that but John was there for 100 years and never caved. Damn, I didn't I didn't pick that connection up. Damn. Maybe oh, wow. I just spoiled something. Yeah, I would say you did. Damn. Oh, That's crazy. All right. Well, um that sex scene between Dan Dean and Anna was so fucking awkward. That was the least sexiest because sex she's... scene music of all time. Because she's not the one for him. Okay, but still, like the fact that that was the music they chose. That was <laughs> I didn't remember what music it was. And when you text me that, I did go back and watch it. And I was like, oh, it is nobody's, like they're trying to push the moment too hard. No nobody's pun intended. getting turned on to that song. <laughs> it was bad. And the whole Titanic nod with the hand. Ugh, gross. Yeah. Just Ugh. sweaty nastiness. Gross. But hey, you know what? Good for him. He banged an angel. Proud of you. He and banged she, an angel. And his brother banged back. a demon. Yeah, you know, they're not so different after all. And I will say that, that that final sequence where he talks about what happened in hell was pretty powerful. And I'm loving this season because it plays into if God is so good, why does he let bad things happen? And I think that's my own personal struggle with religion. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in any of that shit because it's like, if God created all this, why does he kill everybody? Like all these religious people are like, God's going to kill you. God's going to smite you. It's like, well, why? If, if if he's truly this being that you say he is, why is he just, why does he want to flood the earth? Why does he want to kill everybody? It doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. Nothing makes sense. It doesn't. In I know why God's doing what He's doing in the show. Yeah, but that's a that just bring it to bring it into like maybe the kinda, show implicates reality. Maybe I'm connected to the season because it, it it plays on a lot of what I believe, and it's just like maybe Eric Kripke's God. Religion's shit. Overall, is how I feel. While Lauren's like, wrap it up, B. I'm drunk and tired, <laughs> but. I'm going off on a drunken soapbox. If you know what, God, <laughs> you want to know who really sucks is God. You know, He's like a very like not nice comedian. Listen me to me. Suck. You're like Let Seinfeld if you, you wanted something. to get canceled. Let me tell you something, folks. God, he's an asshole. You know why he's an asshole? Because war and huh, and but and that's it, how you know. Hobbs news Hobbs Geek News got canceled. 
Hansel, nobody religious was listening to this anyways. My mom. I don't know. Uh, well, sorry. I guess she's going to let us know on YouTube. But <laughs> she can't hear me anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I Yeah, I don't know. I I... I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't I don't get why we y'all I, I can't because I, I'm gonna start getting deep, like I said. So we're we're we'll cut off here for now. You know who got deep in this episode? Did he? Or maybe he ran out of dick. I don't know. <laughs> she was like, find my grace, and he's like, I'm all out. <laughs> oh. oh anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We will be back soon talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Every Friday is our Freaky Friday. I'm dubbing it Freaky Friday because Dean was getting freaky. Sam was getting freaky. We all getting, getting freaky. A lot of freakiness and also Supernatural Friday. So thanks for hanging out with us. If there's anything we missed, anything you want to add, please let us know. Share with a friend. Help us grow. All of that good stuff. Thank you for hanging out. And we will see you in just a couple of days. Cheers, my friends.